Hey guys, so here's our project for today. I got this six ton train unit and I'm just here doing a preventative maintenance. However, when I came up here to change the filters on it, I noticed that our inducer motor is making a lot of racket. It's still blowing air, but it's, as I'm sure you can hear, it's very, very loud. Now, when we come over here to our ignition module, And we see it's flashing three times. Come down here to our failure code. So our pressure switch has failed or something along the lines of a pressure switch issue could even be related to this inducer motor. Uh, like I said, it is blowing air. If I had to guess, it feels like it's blowing air about 80% of a normal fully operational inducer motor. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna power it down, pull that panel off, and inspect the inducer motor, see if maybe that pressure switch is blocked up by anything, see if there's maybe something inside that inducer motor that's causing that racket. Chances are it's just going bad because that's what they do. So let me set the camera down, guys. I'll bring you back in just a second. Here we are, guys. There's our inducer motor. It looks old, sort of rusted out. The main issue though, that I immediately noticed, is our tube going to our pressure switch is just kind of dangling down here. Not sure how or why that's happened. I've honestly never seen that happen before. I've seen them where the end will crack and kind of split off and then they'll fall off, but the uh, port right there, if we can get, it, get some eyes on this port right back there, I don't know if you can see it very well, but um, that doesn't appear that be the case it doesn't look like this uh, rubber hose is really that bad a condition so I'm gonna jam it back on there turn this thing back on and see if we fire up I'm probably still gonna quote to replace this inducer motor um, I'm gonna pull it off real quick and just check on the inside but if it's still making that noise and I don't dig anything out of it I'm just gonna quote to replace it because I don't want it to be running with uh, a bad inducer motor and then just one day that inducer motor fails and, you know, obviously they're going to call me a hack because I have to come back out here a couple days after I do a preventative maintenance. So it's much better this way. I'm not sure how well you guys can see inside there, but there doesn't seem to be any obstructions in this inducer wheel. Check the little fan down inside there. It doesn't seem to be any obstructions in the little cooling fan on the end of this inducer motor, so. Yeah, I think we'll just end up quoting to replace it. I see nothing inside of there. Double check that heat exchanger before I just go quoting just the inducer. So I never wanna replace an inducer, come back and then find out that the uh, heat exchanger or something major is cracked so remember look at the big picture guys I got my inducer reassembled turned it back on I'm sure you can hear that it still sounds like garbage but at least we'll be able to see if everything else fires up Yeah, we do have ignition. So it does work, but we do need to replace that inducer ASAP. So I'm gonna submit a quote for that today. But before I do that, I'm going to pull the panel off the back side of this and just inspect that heat exchanger. This unit doesn't seem to be old enough that it would have a crack in the heat exchanger, but you never know. So let's get that taken care of real quick. Well guys, our heat exchanger is in uh, actually much worse condition than I thought. Let's see if I can show you what I'm talking about here. So right there, 
we got a bunch of cracks right along there. Right over here on the side, right there, we got a nice big old crack going around the edge of that tube. And then right down here, you can see there's another ginormous crack. See if I can show you without dropping my phone into the vent. So those three cracks right there um, are going to make me shut this unit down. Turn the gas off. And then the other thing I'm going to do, I'm going to pull this panel back open. I'm going to pull the W1, W2 wires off just to make absolutely sure there's no way this thing could even attempt to go on in heat mode. And then we'll just have to get a hold of the facility manager and let them know what it needs and see how they want to proceed. So, hopefully there's a part two to this because it looks like next week there's going to be a cold spell and they're going to want some heat in this store, I'm assuming anyway. So, alright guys, well that'll wrap it up for today. I'm going to submit a quote and hopefully we'll be back here in, uh, within a week and get this thing replaced, alright? Until then, guys, like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.